I'm going to try to talk to you about the lymphatic system in one 15-minute video. I don't know if it's possible, but it might be. First of all, let's talk about the functions of it. It is a part of the circulatory system. It's just not a part of the cardiovascular system. So the cardiovascular system is made up of more than just the blood vessels and blood it's and the heart and so forth. The lymphatic system is very important. The functions of the lymphatic system basically are to help move fluids through your body. To move lymph or plasma, remember what lymph is, it's plasma that leaked out of capillaries and at that point we call it interstitial fluid but if it sneaks into the lymph vessels then we call it lymph. It's all the same thing. To move that lymph through filters and those filters are lymph nodes, we'll talk about them and show you some anatomy, it's in your book. Uh, for cleaning. So we're going to take this these body fluids and we're going to do some cleaning of it, some filtering of it. So uh, and then we're going to return this fluid to the bloodstream and it's a continuous process and it happens fast. In fact if I were to give you an intermuscular injection of a drug, um, that drug would be throughout your whole body in two to three minutes. So this is fast. This is like a fast-moving stream going down a mountain hill. And we're going to move nutrients and waste to and from cells respectively. So we've got to get oxygen car and to the cells and, and sugar to the cells. We've got to get um, carbon dioxide and other uh, toxic metabolites out of the cells, okay, and away from the cells and out of the body. So we've got to get them to exit routes, excretory routes, but on the way, we're going to filter them through lymph nodes. Okay, so another, uh, and that's the filter up here, lymph nodes. And then another function of the lymphatic system is to move the white blood cells, especially lymphocytes, to their soldier posts. And even your book refers to lymphocytes as the soldiers in the war against infectious agents or invaders. The soldier posts are the spleen where a lot of uh, lymphocytes which are both beta cells or B cells and T cells are stored for uh, emergencies and in case of blood loss. So we can think of the spleen as the barracks you know and the nodes are the outposts where uh, the soldiers stay uh, to kill the bad guys and eat them and digest them. So white cells uh, are, are uh, Pretty important in that regard, and white cells can regenerate their uh, um, not vacuoles, but uh, anyway, their lysosomes, lysosomes, uh, where uh, all of these things are digested and broken down for either waste disposal or use. Okay, the anatomy we'll take a look at. It's in your book, but also you will want to look at Tammy Moore's video that I'll show you in a moment. Um, most classical presentations don't mention bone marrow as a part of lymphatic anatomy, but some do uh, because it produces all the blood cells, including all the white blood cells. Now, a lot of the white blood cells are produced uh, in the spleen and thymus when there's a baby, in a baby, but in adulthood, it's all they're all produced in the bone marrow, and um, from stem cells and the process of producing uh, blood cells is called hematopoiesis. Uh, it's uh, very important of course and uh, most of these white and red cells don't live very long. A lot of the white cells live less than a day. Uh, the red cells of course might live four to six weeks. So when you give blood uh, you can't do it again uh, until you've replaced what's been taken. The anatomy includes tonsils, Peyer's patches in the intestine, the spleen, the thymus, and lymph nodes, and of course the bone marrow. Um, I'm going to say for the purposes of this lecture that the bone marrow could be considered a part of lymphatic system anatomy because it produces the white cells. We normally associate the lymphatic system with um, the immune system. And it is a part of the immune system, but the immune system is more than that. Next week we'll be talking about that and looking at some more uh, videos. In your book there's a diagram like this one that shows what a lymph node is. 
And the main thing we want to talk about, we will go to your book and refer to it uh, in a moment. Um, in fact, I'll do that right now, okay? So, oh, bookshelf, okay. So, when we go to your book, this is where uh, what I've said uh, is, is uh, supported. Lymphocytes, the main warriors, warriors of the immune system, arise in red bone marrow, along with other formed elements. They then mature into two main varieties of lymphocytes, T cells, which uh, do two things. Uh, there's a helper T cell, which helps regulate the uh, immune system responses. And of course, the, these, those T cells, the helper T cells, are the ones that are destroyed by uh, uh, AIDS, by the AIDS virus. And uh, B cells, which are the memory cells that protect the body against antigens by making antibodies. So an antigen is a foreign element that is in, uh, an infectious agent, potentially. At least your body thinks it is. And your body produces antibodies against those antigens. In fact, the term antigen means antibody generating um, protein or f substance, antibody generating substance. So an antigen is something your body thinks uh, is a bad thing for you and wants to get rid of it. And so it, it, it builds antibodies against it. Actually, um, the cells that regulate this, the T cells, are called T cells because they go to school in the thymus uh, uh, in a baby and they basically, in a young person or baby, uh, they are trained to recognize what is good for you or not harmful in any, any way, benign, or what is bad for you. And if it's bad for you, then they stimulate the rest of the system to attack it. Now the problem is, sometimes, they get bad teachers. And the bad teachers teach them that certain things in your body that aren't bad for you, that get into your body, are bad for you and you get a general response against those things like ragweed pollen and you get an allergy, an allergic response. Okay. Now if that allergic response is against something that's natural in your body like the beta cells of your pancreas, we call that an autoimmune disease because your own immune system is attacking you and those diseases can be very very bad. In fact they can uh, they can kill a person. So, like multiple sclerosis and stuff like that. So that's the lymph, lymph system and, and, the, and, and the lymphatic tissue and then uh, lymphoid tissue they talk about in your book and so forth. Go to the next page. I want to really talk about lymph nodes. What is the structure of a lymph node? This is in your book. We're on page whatever. What page am I on? 755 right now. So, so on 752 or so, 755 these are the pages you should be reading. Here's a structure of a lymph node. Okay, I'm going to try to, uh, in fact, not I'm going to try. I'm going to, well, maybe I'll do it this way. I'm going to see. There we go. I want to get it big. So here's the deal on what a lymph node is. All of the lymphatic tissue that you have in your bodies, all the lymphatic organs that Tammy Moore is going to talk about with you, are structured like this. They're either individual lymph nodes. You have 100,000 of them in your body. Just stick your tongue under your bottom lip and you can feel the bumps. Those are lymph nodes. And they have a lot of ves afferent vessels, which is where the lymph enters the node, and few vessels leaving, which means it's like a dam on a creek. If you dam a creek, the water still flows over the dam, but behind the dam, the water slows up. So the flow of lymph, once it gets into the lymph node, slows down. What does that do? That allows more time for the soldiers, the lymphocytes, to, which move by amoebic action, which is sort of slow. So it gives them time to catch up with the invaders that might be in this lymph and eat them, kill them, eat them. So it's a defense mechanism that's uh, pretty well designed and, and, and pretty neat uh, in the body. 
Okay. So now let us go to um, the next part of what I wanted to show you. Back to this. Outline. There's the outline. Okay. I have the link here that you can look at and type into your browser if you need to or you can just look up Tammy Moore Lymph System 1 YouTube video and I didn't embed it here but it's there and I will go to it okay so that you can see what that looks like sorry Where's the video? There it is. Okay. So listen to Tammy Moore for just a second if you can make out what she's saying. The lymphatic system. Lymph vessels are found in all tissues except the central nervous system, the bone marrow, and tissues without blood vessels such as cartilage. The lymph system. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. You can look at it yourself and listen to it. Tammy Moore has two really good videos on the lymphatic system and the immune system. The lymphatic system part one is basically a video where she explains the anatomy of the lymphatic system and it's very good. The reason I like Tammy Moore's videos is because you know what? You can outline them. It's almost like reading a book. You can outline them and come out with a very good outline and that helps you understand the, the topic. And the lymphatic system 2 video is really all about the immune system and the way we defend ourselves against infectious agents. So we'll talk about that one next week. But I encourage you to watch this and look at it and outline it, you know, and then read your book. And I think you'll find the reading of, of your electronic book very uh, uh, much uh, easier to understand. Um, but basically, the big message here is the lymphatic system is a part of the circulatory system it moves fluids through your body it moves them rapidly through your body your skeletal muscles are a part of the pump that helps move these fluids so the more you exercise the more you pump you relieve the pressure on your heart but you move these fluids through their filters much more quickly and detoxify yourself um, better uh, by exercising and moving this fluid around. The other thing that keeps this fluid moving in the right direction are check valves within the lymphatic vessels so that the flow maintains uh, is maintained in one direction so uh, when the lymph fluid goes forward it goes forward through the valves but it can't go backwards because back pressure causes the valves to flip closed in exactly the same way as happens in your veins. If you remember from the circulatory system uh, discussion uh, a week or so ago. So this is pretty important stuff. Um, you have a hundred thousand lymph nodes in your body plus you have concentrations of lymph nodes massed together into individual organs. Um, some of those organs are more distinctly defined than others like the spleen uh, compared to the tonsils. And Generally, uh, the lymphatic system is nothing more than masses of these lymph nodes that are there to filter and filter and filter and filter basically your plasma. Your plasma is used to transport food to cells and take toxic wastes and carbon dioxide away. Oxygen also goes to the cells, right? So each cell doesn't have an individual blood vessel. Um, so it's the lymphatic system that is a transport system and a very important one uh, that helps you to be protected against infectious agents and that gets rid of the toxic waste. So when we think about all of these systems in our body, remember we're going to get all this lymph back to the bloodstream and then it's going to go to the excretory organs and be filtered again and the toxic wastes are going to be removed. And what, what organs remove those toxic wastes? Well, yes, the kidney. So the urinary tract does that, but also the lungs. Remember, you're breathing out volatile organic compounds and carbon dioxide. So the lungs are a very important part of this. Okay, thanks for listening. 
and good luck this week and we'll be see you next week if not before